Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Today I've got something really special and I know everything's special, but hey, this is mm, taking it to the next level. And I do mean taking it to the next level. Let's say you've been brewing for a while, whether it's an Anvil or another brand, or you know, you're doing your own kettles, it doesn't matter. And you're like, you know what? I need to take this to the next step. I really want to step up and you know, what's out there? What can I do that really will take my brewing to that next level? Hmm. You've got all kinds of different little fermenters from your glass to your plastic carboys, but I think I have just the thing for you. Yes, Anvil's Crucible Conical Fermenter. And some of you, that's a lot. You're going, I get it's a fermenter. I get Anvil makes it, but I really don't understand everything else. And honestly, in December of this year, I'll have been brewing for seven years. And I don't know how many years I had been brewing before I even heard the word conical fermenter. So that's not something that I was really familiar with. And then once I understood what it was, it wasn't something I ever imagined in home brewing. Yes, I've seen some of the plastic ones out there, seen some other questionable brands I've never heard of in my life and <laughs> seen some rough ratings out there. But just to, let's go over something super, super, super simple. What's a crucible? Well, that's trademarked for this product, but an actual crucible is a ceramic or steel or metal type container in which substances can be melted or subjected to high temperatures. I think this one, you know, can handle quake yeast and you might even want to chill this down based on the yeast you're looking to use. What's a conical? It's not a common term for most people. It just means cone shaped. So what it does is as it's fermenting, the yeast will just keep going towards the bottom and settle in a nice, kind of a, a mildly packed, it can get packed, packed, but a mild little cone at the bottom, kind of like the opposite of ice cream, you know? But the difference is your beer will be the ice cream on top of the cone. And the cone is the yeast that you may or may not want and trub. So there may be some debris in there, but you could reuse it if you want. And it's just something to be aware of. I'm gonna unbox this. I'm gonna try to take it nice and simple, nice and easy, so that any and everyone fully understands I'm not gonna try to throw out some crazy terms. And if I do, I'll try to explain them. But first, this was sent to me by Anvil. No, I did not purchase this. This was sent to me by Anvil. I am going to do an unboxing. We're going to put it through its rigors, should we say, and test it and ferment in it and do all kinds of other cool things. Just a little heads up, it is not pressure capable. Credit out to Brian, Short Circuited Brewing. He did show it, it can tolerate some mild pressure, which I've joked about other systems that they say are not pressure capable, but yeah, I've done glass carboys and we'll just say I've pushed it to a, where I probably shouldn't have nothing happened, but <laughs> don't push the limits, you could have a problem. I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna cut the top. There's nothing special about this on cutting the top. It's all sealed up from Anvil. I mean, all the sides look the same. So I'm gonna go ahead, cut it open pull it out and explain a few things as I do so. Okay, we're throwing in another book giveaway. I've got to do it with this, come on. I couldn't, I, I'd feel bad if I didn't. For some reason, it's, I didn't get it from Target, but it's got a Target discount sticker on it. Sorry, it's there. I'm not gonna peel it off. I don't want to damage the book. But this book I felt was appropriate for the Anvil system. It is Homebrew Beyond the Basics, because this is Beyond the Basics. All grain brewing and other next steps. I saw something in there where they were talking about using grains and herbs and all kinds of cool experiments and temperature experiments, but definitely a cool book. All you gotta do, if you haven't seen this contest before, we're gonna be running it for quite a while. All you have to do is go down in the comments and put a keyword. I'll mention that keyword later in the video. All you need to do is use that keyword somewhere in your comment, beginning, end, just throw it in a comment, I don't care exactly seven days from the time this video posts, I will do a little drawing and we will figure out completely random. Uh, I mentioned it in the first thing, you'll have to go check out that about the giveaway so you understand the instructions. But very simple, it'll be random. If you're outside the US, you will get a Kindle edition if it's available. If not, I'll figure something out because I'm starting to find out some books aren't available in some countries. So either way, I'll hook you up, we'll figure something out. But keep watching, look for the keyword. Okay, first things first, and I think I've told you this before if you've watched the Anvil unboxing. It comes with instructions and it comes with a liquid LCD that you can put on the outside to kind of get a temperature reading, which 
you're gonna get pretty accurate reading on that. I still like something submerged in the wart and we have something available. But my eyesight isn't the best. It's an age thing, but yeah. Go on Anvil's website and print out a much larger copy. Makes life really easy. It's easier to read, it's easier to see. Uh, they put this in to be nice. There's a lot of companies that don't even include instructions anymore. They just have a little link that says, go here. And that's just a courtesy there. We have a bunch of stuff on top here. I'm gonna pull it all out and we'll go over it as I do. It's covered in cotton. Um, I did see Brian was wearing gloves. I'm not going to for the main reason is, is when I'm done, I'm gonna wanna clean it all anyways. I've got my microfiber cloths and it's recommended to clean it. And I know he did too. He mentioned that he was going to, but he handled it with those really nice gloves, which I was like, okay, that's kind of nice. Uh, sadly, I gave all my gloves to my son when he took my smoker when I had to move. So I need to buy some more gloves. It's got all kinds of goodies here and they're all on top. That's something that appears to have changed. It used to be on the bottom from my understanding. Okay, we've got lots of goodies. I'm gonna get to the bread and butter and then we'll go over all the goodies and I'll unwrap all of those. Pull everything else, everything out nice and slowly. Okay. Now, I pulled this directly out. I'm pretty sure this has a dome on it. So I'm gonna flip it back over and I'm gonna get this off so I don't put any weight on that. I don't think that's really designed to be subjected to a lot of weight. And I don't know how much total weight would be good or bad, but I don't want to find out. So we're going to set that there. And we've got more goodies inside. So I need to open that. Okay, I'm going to take this and I'm going to flip it over. And there's a good reason. We have our legs. She's a three-legged one. If you've seen Short Circuited Brewing and Brian, the legs and everything came out and then he had all the accessories underneath the styrofoam. This was in the top. So the packing has changed a little bit. Just something to be aware of. Feel free to pull the other piece of styrofoam out and go looking, but just something to be aware of. Okay, so once you open the box, you get everything out, carefully take everything out. Your instructions are gonna tell you, little inventory here, and like I said, print it big. Much easier to read. I'll hold it there for a second so people can see it. And I'm gonna go over each of these items so you know what it is. This is a one and a half inch butterfly valve, tri-clamp, very heavy. And you're gonna have two one and a half inch gaskets. You're gonna have two one and a half inch tri-clamps. You're gonna have a one and a half inch Tri-clamp elbow, it's 90 degrees. Gonna have a straight ball valve. It's got a little washer in the front and it's got a little Teflon washer in the back and we'll explain that. Get your racking arm. Bigger version and a little more than the one in your anvil if you have an anvil or like system. Then you have of course an airlock and a stopper. I will mention one thing that um, I saw Brian do and I've seen, I think Brewlosophy has done it and a few other people have done it, is if you wanna keep things from being sucked back in, if you're doing something where you're pulling from the bottom, you could replace this with a three piece and put a balloon on there and let the CO2 build up in that. Just make sure you get a big enough balloon. You don't wanna put some like Teflon tiny balloon and cause a lot of back pressure, but still it's something to be aware of. You have three I want to remember plastic rivets. They're very little, very tiny. And then it says that you get three legs and three feet. Okay, I do have three legs. The feet are already installed, just to be aware. They're plastic. And I did see a comment out there on something that I was reading about the system once I got the box and was like overwhelmed and just shocked like, oh my gosh, you know, let's see if I can do a good job. Um, it's plastic right here, yes. It allows it to keep the metal flat and level. And it helps to keep costs down too because I have seen the professional systems, the gigantic barrel systems, and I know Anvil is like, you know what? 
why would we want to increase the cost for something that's going to do the same job? I mean, and they gave you nice, and these are heavy, stainless steel legs. The plastic on here is to prevent damage to your floor or whatever you're setting it in so it doesn't get all scratched up or cut up. So it's been very, very well thought out and I was very impressed. Um, I do look like I have a little glue up here, which is not a big deal, that'll get cleaned off. I mean, I can't imagine getting these and lining them up and setting them in, and doing it and getting it perfect every time. Uh, whoever's doing it has probably gotten some skills down on that one. Um, I've put screen covers on phones and I've had people analyze me and then they try it themselves and go, how did you do that? Yeah, it's Zen, it's all Zen. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the legs on. And what you're gonna do, you have a little hole over here and you wanna line this up with that hole, which of course I can't see. So I'm gonna to have to do it over here. Once I have it lined up, turn it around, let you see. You can see inside, you'll take the rivet, push it in, which it's not going in of course, and I kind of thought that might happen. Okay, I just learned something new. Okay, when you put these legs down, I had to twist it a little and push and push down. So if it doesn't go in easy, don't force it. Don't go get a pair of pliers or a screwdriver and shove it in. Just push it all the way down. Make sure that when you line it up and I'll show you what I did again. Okay, so I had it kind of like that and I might have to do a zoom on the camera for you to see, but you can see a little bit of the metal, okay? I pushed down a little harder and I twisted it a little bit and now I can't see any of the metal, which tells me it's lined up perfectly. And I should be able to do this, like I said, without looking. And I did. Brian mentioned it snapped twice. This one, I only heard a little pop, tiny, and it's all the way in, it's not going any further. This one, I just heard it, it's very quiet. It's like, and that was it. Nothing, nothing major. Let's get the last leg in. Okay, that's it. Flip this bad boy over. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Okay, the lid has a rubber seal. You can remove it, you can take it out, you can clean it. Um, actually, pull on it a little bit, yeah, it moves. I expected it to. And we'll do the simple piece first. That's where your stopper goes or bung, what do you want to say? And there's your airlock, okay? I'm gonna leave that out for now. I'm gonna put this on just so I don't knock it over. And then of course the clamps, pretty obvious. Okay, we're gonna put the bottom piece on. Take your finger and you rub it under here, you'll feel there's a groove. When you look at your rubber washer, it has a little groove on the top and the bottom. Same thing here, a little groove, another little groove. I'm gonna put that on there. I'll get my tri-clamp ready, just like this, nothing special. And I guess I should find the opening. There it is. Come around here, put that on there. Put about half of it on, just bring the other half about. Loosen it up first, might make your life a little easier. And just snug it down. Just till it's nice and snug. You don't have to be Hercules on that thing. Trust me, I always joke that somebody was on a Monday or a Friday. This way too, if you're off a little, you can twist it a little bit by loosening it and then I snug it right back up. That's it, nothing special. Okay, now I have the tri-clamp butterfly. You want this pointing out, it's got a groove, you got your washer, it sits right in there. On this, little trick with this I've already learned, is push this like that so you have it lined up. Just set your clamp over it. That way both sides kind of get in place for you and you can let go and you don't have to sit and hold it. You can line it up however you want. You can loosen this up if you forgot to loosen it. I thought I had it too loose. Bring it back together. And all I'm doing is holding it with the two fingers, nothing special. And then I tighten it up just so it's snug. Like I said, I'm new to conical fermenters. Never had one before. Never really, you know, went deep diving into that. And I expect that most of you were not born with this knowledge and don't have this knowledge. So. I'm gonna keep going over the basics, but one of the things, and I learned very quickly on this, is this butterfly thing. You can pull it all day long. I do like being able to do this to see if this is snug. Pull it just a little bit, just tug on it. You're not gonna to try to rip it. But now you wanna actually turn it. It's got a safety piece. You pull it out, spring load it, and then it opens. 
and you can lock it open. <laughs> yeah, you can lock it open. So if you don't know how you opened it and it locks and it just keeps coming, yeah. So why would you wanna leave it locked in place open? If you're doing a recirculation type cleaning or something like that with one of their add-ons, you could definitely do that. It would make life a little easier. Let's go ahead and put our straight ball valve on. Leave the washer on, take the Teflon off. I don't know if it's really necessary, but it's always nice to be safe than sorry. And yes, I'm gonna refer back to Brian because he does some smart little things that a lot of us don't think about right off the top of our heads until it's too late. Um, and then others, we think of it and go, hmm, I'll take a chance. He recommended putting a little bit of uh, keg grease on here, just food grade, just to help it seal a little bit better. I'm not gonna do that right now for one reason, as I mentioned in the beginning, I'm gonna take it all apart and clean it. So, and you have this little piece that I can take off so that way you can actually clean a little more in here. And on top of that, you can connect other things. Yeah. And you're like, oh, that's what that is on my, my brewing system. It comes off, I forgot about that. I think most of us don't even think about it because it's on there. We thought about it when we first got it and we never took it off or never had a reason to other than maybe once or twice to clean it. But yeah, not a big deal. This sits right here. Okay, you're gonna have a hose coming out of this. If this is in the way, there is nothing that says this has to point that way. You can loosen this, spin it around, have it come out this side, the other side, whatever works for you. It's extremely flexible. It does not have to come out the same way. So if you want to have a cup under here and catch something, this would be in your way. So you would want to move this. I would say it's 90 degrees, but it's actually a little more. It's ah, 360, so it's 120 degrees. So 20 to 40, yeah, it's 120 degrees. So you'd move it 120 degrees. So now, and just like your, if you have an anvil, foundry, same piece. So we turn this around. Okay, I think you can see that. Simply take the Teflon, there we go. Take the nut, put it on. And you're not gonna go crazy with this. Push your straight ball valve so that it's nice and all the way in. Tighten it up, so it's about hand tight. And then give it a nice twist so it's nice and snug, but it should turn. And there you go, it turns. They recommend it kind of getting it hand tight, give it a quarter turn. That Teflon is what's allowing the whole thing to turn. That's why the nut's not coming off. Take your racking arm, put it on, and just tighten it up. It doesn't have to be super tight. I'm holding it for a reason, and I'll explain. There we go, I think I'm perfect. Okay, what's gonna happen here is that two things. When you add the wart to this, this may have some air or O2 in it, especially if it's pointing down. See how close it gets? Yeah. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to know from externally where it's pointing. I have mine going this way, just like the handle. So I know if my handle's in the air, this is in the air. I know if my handle's pointing down, I know it's pointing down. Really easy. I don't have to think about it. It's not rocket science, super simple. So when you add your wart, you need to make sure you bring it up after the wart's added, just to get any oxygen out of there. Just let it bubble up, let the liquid move around, and then you can turn it back to where it needs to be. That way you don't get any surprises later when you have to open it up and just make your life a little easier. <laughs> Looks like somebody polished it a little more the end there, not a big deal. We're gonna clean it in case that has any kind of oils or you know, anything from cleaning and when they built the whole thing. But as you can see, the measurements go all the way down to 14 liters but all of your measurements are there. There is a note in the instructions that says it could be off plus or minus a quarter gallon. So that's a concern um, that I'm definitely concerned. But I will also mention that Brian, again, short circuited brewing, said that Anvil had mentioned that they were working on that. So I would expect to see these to be very accurate or pretty close, probably more so um, I am going to test it. I am going to verify how accurate it is and do all kinds of other lovely testing, including fermentation tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow I will start fermenting in this bad boy. Got to spend a lot of time cleaning tonight though. So just something to be aware of. So let's go over a quick overview. So if you're looking to win this book, the keyword, I'll put it down below. 
just so there's no misspellings or misunderstandings because when I do the randomizer, it has to match. But down below, put Anvil Crucible. Those two keywords together with a space between them, but Anvil Crucible. That's all you need somewhere in your comment down below and good luck. Thank you. Okay, quick overview. I'm gonna put the lid on, drop some paper, you know, make a big mess. Not a big deal. I got a lot of cleaning to do tonight. <laughs> Not just this, my new anvil. I got to get that cleaned, which yes, I did pay for that. And you did see that recently, hopefully. They come in seven and 14 gallons. So you can get a seven gallon and the price is amazing. I'm not going to quote the price because it could change down the road. I've been, uh, I went out tonight and there seems to be a shortage of chicken wings. So the price is like double in some places and it just blows my mind, but it is what it is. So I'm not going to quote prices, prices do change, but right now it's the most affordable stainless steel conical fermenter on the market. I did see there was a few off brands that I've never heard of in my life. And I also saw a lot of one stars. So out of a four or five star rating. So, you know, it's the best value on the market at this time from any major player in the game that is making quality products. So you can get a seven gallon, 14 gallon. They recommend on the seven gallon, it's designed more for five gallon batches. Does it mean you can't do a five and a half? No. Does it mean you can't do a five and a quarter? No. But if you're gonna pitch a ton of yeast and you're gonna get a cross and you might need a blow off. So something to be considering. They're just trying to take into consideration. You gotta have that dead space, you know, or head space, however you wanna call it. Um, it's got the rotate, rotating arm, which is really cool. I'm down. I'm up and I don't have to look inside. I know where it is. So, and you saw it gets really close, which is awesome. Everything professional quality, I mean, it is just literally like you walked into a brewery and they shrank it down, you know, honey, I shrunk the kids and here you go. So that's really cool. You saw the embossed markings. I did see a competitor that's got one for a little more and that's all, looks like it's painted on, which tells me it's gonna wear off. These are stamped. They're never gonna wear off. I mean, unless you hit it with a baseball bat, it's not going anywhere. So something to be aware of. Um, Definitely sturdy construction. I will warn you, and this is where I warn you. They have a lot of cool add-ons, but one of the add-ons you might want to consider. Now, I have this table, which is cool, but keep in mind, and that's how I was thinking too, that if I put five gallons of liquid in here, five gallons of just, let's just say H2O, water, okay? That's 42.7 pounds. In a keg, that's normally about 50 pounds. This is 19 pounds. So we're sitting at over 60, 61, almost 62 pounds. So if I have to lift this off the ground, 62 pounds and put it up here so that I can let it drain into a keg, my back hurts right now. I jacked my back up a few weeks ago. I can't imagine how bad it would hurt lifting 62 pounds up this high. I would need assistance. And yes, I'm going to do it at least once. So I'm gonna need some assistance call my son and hopefully my younger one will be back too. His back's good. So we'll keep it in shape as long as we can. Like I said, they sell leg extensions. These legs come off in a much longer leg with special tension bar on the bottom to kind of keep it reinforced and stable. That way you can get a much higher and you can get a keg under it and go from there and you don't have to push it up on a table or something like that. I will put the height if I can find it up above me. If not, we'll just let it go for now. Um, they have a cooling system. The cooling system's really cool. Essentially, they're gonna give you a different bung. It has the probe, so you can put your temperature, it comes with a pump, it comes with the temperature controller, which, you know, a power system similar to Inkbird. And it has a coil that goes down, comes back up, goes back down, comes back out. You don't have to have a glycol system to run something like that. You can have a, a cooler or something that has ice water, you can do a closed circuit system if you really had to. That pump wouldn't work for that, of course, but something to be aware of. But you can take that pump and just put it in a thing of ice water and it will run the cool water as needed to keep it down. Now you're gonna have to do the whole thing and check and keep making sure it has ice or you know frozen water bottles, whatever it may be. But it's a really cool way of doing it, especially if you're not looking to buy a glycol system because we all know that's a huge investment. And yeah, you don't need a, in the system, if I remember right, the cooling system, uh, we'll just say it's affordable. It's not crazy, it's not a big deal, and it comes with everything you need. Um, I didn't see the clamps on it, so you might need some little metal clamps to put the hoses over the tubes, but not a big deal. 
Other thing to consider is if your wart isn't oxygenated when you put it in here, <laughs> 60 pounds, yeah. I would not recommend it. It's bad enough when I'm picking up a glass carboy and killing my back with that. And that's probably going on 45 to 50 pounds. So something to consider if you don't pre-oxygenate your wart before you dump it in, you can get Anvil's oxygen wand and buy yourself a little tank of oxygen, which you can pick those up. I picked mine up at, I think it was Home Depot and just give it a couple bursts. Make sure you're good, rock on, no big deal. They have an oxygen free transfer kit. I know a lot of people look at that and go, hey, it's just some clamps, it's some disconnects. Yeah, but it's not that expensive and you pretty much would pay about the same for all that stuff. And guess what? You don't have to guess what the inside diameter is. You don't have to guess what type of piece. You don't have to go searching for a little L clamp. Everything comes in a little pack. You just rinse it out, wash it, put it on, plug and play, no big deal. That's the benefit and lately, I know there's some products that are hard to get right now, but any and everything I've ordered from Anvil lately has been like, boom, boom. I mean, shipping is quick. They're like, it's out the door. This thing is 30.5 inches tall. They say allow for about six and a half inches for the bung and the airlock, maybe less. You know, your mileage may vary if you're using a different type of airlock that does come with one, which is nice. The handle to handle is 16.5 inches, 12.25, Without the handles, keep the handles. You're gonna need them. Um, 0 0.6 millimeter thick, which to me doesn't sound that thick, but trust me, this thing is like solid. It is quality, it is rock solid. So yeah, it's the difference between, you know, when you're talking plastic and you're talking stainless steel and yeah, much different. A re reminder, it is not pressure. You don't pressure ferment in this thing, please. Do not, do not, do not. Just don't. Other thing they have, they came out with pretty recently that you can hook onto here and do everything is they actually have a yeast harvesting kit. So instead of opening this, having a big bucket and going, oops, forgot to pull it. And having everything just kind of fly out, it has a little tube, give you a little more control over it. So you can kind of control where the yeast is going and get it out and not have to worry about it just gushing out on you. Um, they did mention a few things of concern is that sometimes you get a lot of yeast in here and it gets packed down. It may take a minute to come out. You may even have to probe it or something. Um, supposedly this happens with professional brewers. Um, might be why I've seen some funny videos where, you know, they're sitting there messing with it. Next thing I know, it just looks like it's just a, gu a gusher. So something to be aware of. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I missed that you may need to know or want. I did remember something. Did remember something that just popped. Is that, and I read the instructions last night and this morning is that during cleaning and maintenance, something that they recommend it is of course, putting the lid on when you're storing it just to keep dust and debris out of it. But the other thing they mentioned is taking it apart and removing all of the O-rings and putting them in a plastic bag and putting them somewhere safe. So that way they don't set, kind of be com compressed and you know, take form to the shape of where they're at. And that way when you move it, you put it back, it never quite seals properly. I get it. Um, Hopefully I use my brewing stuff enough that I don't need to do that, but something that if I know I'm going to be down for, you know, a couple months, it's not a bad idea to do that. Obviously they understand and they're telling you for a reason. So I guarantee you it wasn't just, Hey, you know what? Let's just put this in to look cool. Now cleaning is very simple. You can use PBW, you can use TLC, you can use barkeeper's friend, just clean the whole thing out. You can do it. Brian at a short circuit, it did like a recirc and had a cool cleaning system. The thing cleans really easy. I even told him I was amazed at how easily it cleans. It just blew my mind. I would have expected it to be a lot of scrubbing. Uh, no, it's just really easy to clean. But when you're done, you're going to want to use something like either star sand or an acid wash. I'm trying to remember my other one. LSR was the other one that I've been testing. So you could use any type of just a nice sanitary acid wash that is going to be food safe and just clean it out, get it all nice and clean and you're ready to go. That should go without saying, I mean, obviously. So thank you again for joining us here at Bitter Reality Brewing. Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing. Definitely appreciate it. I'll do a review on this once I've gotten to use it a little bit first. Okay. But thank you. I mean, huge thank you out there to Anvil. Was not expecting something this crazy fancy. Um, very impressed. Don't forget too, if let's say this is a little outside your range, 
You could easily check out their bucket fermenter. It's very nice, and I mean very nice, and you get a better, another half gallon of headspace so that if you you know want to push the limits, you got a little bit more uh, with all that foam going up before the crossing hits the top. 